The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the x everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and for the next four hours, I'm your host and dear guide as together we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the x It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And the x comes to you from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, on the x Broadcast Network, Talkstar Radio Network, UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio, and on Star Cable. If you'd like to give us a call, toll-free worldwide, 1-800-610-7035. My email address is xzone at xzoneradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, xzoneradiotv at hotmail.com. And our website, www.xzoneradiotv.com. My guest this hour is Tony Elizabeth Sarah Petro- Petrinovich. And uh, she is a master teacher, metaphysician, and quantum physics researcher who instructs spiritual seekers how to see, hear, understand, and express from their core, through their heart, the voice of the soul and into infinity. Tony is clairvoyant, clairaudient, and aware of the invisible world, assisting others to access these dimensions as well. Through the heart, the voice of the soul, she teaches people the value of absolute forgiveness through the ritual of absolution. Her website is youaresacred.com. And Tony, welcome to the Exxon. Thank you, Rob. It's wonderful to be here. How exciting. What a wonderful program you have. Why, thank you very much. Uh, Tell me, how long ago did your quest start? Was it when you were just a little Tony or while you were growing up to be a bigger Tony? Well, the quest kind of just um, never started because Mm -hmm. when I was, small, young, say five years old, I suddenly realized that the world I was living in was not the same world everybody else was living in, that I I was living in this dimension and many other dimensions at the same time. So it was more like, rather than questing, it was more like my understanding coming to some kind of a foundation where I could express what I was seeing without um, intruding, if you would, mm-hmm. into other people's belief systems and consciousness. Sure. Um, it, it, I, I like to say I came prepackaged this way. Came prepackaged. I've never heard it said that way. And you know what? I really like that. <laughs> yeah, you, just, you know, it's kind of like plunking me down here and saying, all right, you're prepackaged and just <laughs> do your thing. And um, it was quite an interesting experience. By the time I was 12... Mm-hmm. I wanted to enter the cloister. I was raised as a Catholic, and yes. I, I had gotten to the place, as you know, all young ladies do, where mm-hmm. they're trying to figure out what, what, they're, what they are and where they're going and that kind of thing. And I finally decided the only place for me was the cloister. Just go behind the wall, go behind the veil, and just be where I could communicate with all the realms I was communicating with without having to explain it to anybody. So my mother asked the... Catholic bishop mm-hmm. in our town, I was in Reno, Nevada, if I could enter the cloister for the summer, and he said yes. So I was all set to go, and my mother, being the very smart woman she was, went out and bought horses. Bought horses? And when she, when she announced at dinner that, yes. you know, I'd been given permission to enter the cloister, and while I was in the cloister, she and my sister would be horseback riding all summer. All right, you and I have well, to take a two-minute commercial break. We're, we're going to come back with more of this great story. Okay. Tony Petrinovich is our special guest. You are sacred.com. Welcome to the Exxon, everyone. We'll start this week right after this two minute commercial break. (laughs) 
Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, this product is a real winner. To learn more about 123 Ready TV, visit our website at www.x. ZBN.net. Hello, I'm Justina Marsh, and with my dad, Pete, we are going to present a new show called Too Good to Be True. Together, we are aiming to discover more truths about this world and beyond. Do you have unanswered questions about the world? Do you ever wonder about aliens, conspiracy theories, or the universe? There are many shows discussing subjects such as pyramids or UFOs, but we want to relay this information based on our own research, including from spiritual means. Hopefully, listeners will be helped with their own beliefs and will appreciate the psychic insights that add to the previous research and information. We both look forward to sharing this insight and beginning this journey with our listeners. Visit xzbn.net for more information about when to listen. Exxon Nation, my guest this hour is Tony Petrinovich. Her website is www.youarsacred.com. So, so before we went to the commercial break, we were talking about how you were going to spend your summer, I would imagine, within the church investigating herself. And your mother announced that she was getting horses. And wow, things took a change for the better. Yes, they did. So um, I spent my summer riding horses, and it did just what I wanted it to do because I could get on my Mm -hmm. horse and ride out in the desert, and I didn't have to talk to anybody, etc. And as we were talking about in the break, I didn't um, really get involved in, again, Mm -hmm. in attempting to express myself multidimensionally until the 70s. And I was living in San Francisco, um, and met some people from the Holy Order of Mans and joined the Holy Order of Mans, which had only begun a few years before. It was an ancient mysticism Mm -hmm. based on a bit of Catholicism and um, meditation, but also mass and that kind of thing. Was this more like, was was this an established religion? Was it a recognized religion, or is it just basically a, a New Age philosophy that had come to being? It stemmed out of Sufi, actually. The original teacher, um, Sufi Sam, mm-hmm. was that's that's where uh, Earl Lighton, who called himself Master Paul, um, he was a student of Sufi Sam, and it came out of Sufism. But he was very he was very good at blending. Um, Paul was at blending together various religious beliefs so that it was open to anyone. It wasn't an established religion like you're referring to no Mm, but what it what it was but we had houses throughout the whole united states it was a wonderful effort and we what we did was do practical street work we would go out on the street and especially in san francisco it was like the 
end of the hippie era, and there were a lot of people who were coming off of all kinds of drugs and things, and we had halfway houses, mm -hmm. and we had places for people to go through withdrawal, and we established these throughout the whole United States. It was a wonderful enterprise, wow. and at the same time, it was based on this very heavy philosophy, this very deep philosophy of ancient mysticism, the Sufism, and mixed with the Catholic Church and Christianity. All right, so could, could you share with us some of the ancient philosophy that was involved in in, in this religion? Uh, the initiations of enlightenment, mm -hmm. self-realization, uh, meditation. We meditated at specific times during the day, which you won't find in Christianity. I no. don't talk much about meditation. Um, alchemy and the awareness of what I teach now is metaphysics which is the underlying principles of all creation, which is not usually seen in various uh, Christian religions or basically any religion, um, that allows people to realize that they are the co-creator of their own life. And this spoke very loudly to me, and I, the Holy Order itself slowly began to dissolve after uh, Master Paul's death in 1974, and it became incorporated within the Orthodox, um, Russian Orthodox Church. And those people who wanted to stay, stayed, and those who wanted to leave, leave. But some people have gone mm -hmm. out and created their own sort of branches of this. But for me, it was a foundation to say, yes, sir, what you're experiencing is real, and other people know, know this too. And other people can speak this language with you so that you're not here on the earth by yourself, which is what it had felt like for a very long time when I was a child, because in the Catholic Church there isn't room for this. Now, so, I, under I understand you're the Chancellor for the Light. Light orbs, yes, for the whole light beings. Now, That's what they call me. Who or what are the light orbs? Okay, people are taking pictures of the light orbs, and they are seeing them as a paranormal phenomena, and mm -hmm. I kind of like the word paranormal because it means like next to normal or with or not necessarily normal, and that's the light orbs say, is that they, they say, we are you and you are us, and you're seeing a manifestation of yourself and you're calling it separate, and that's okay with us, but we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to appear so that you can see us. The light orbs have been in this dimension infinitely. It's not like they're suddenly appearing. It's that we can now see them, and people see them as round orbs of light. Mm -hmm. They also take pictures of them, and, and more people probably take pictures of them than see them with their naked eye. And they're not sure what they are. And a lot of people have assigned various definitions to them, like they're uh, deceased souls, or they're angels in form, or they're this or they're that. And what they really are are conscious beings who are a group consciousness, and I'm telling you what they've told me, that they are a group consciousness that has the ability to communicate with us in our minds and also through sight now that humanity is capable of accepting the, the fact that our visual spectrum is bigger than we were taught in biology class. And, and yet the scientific community, the photographic community, the people who are expert in optics tell us, which makes a lot of sense to me, that these are... Uh, particles of moisture or dust that are caught in the air when a little, when an electronic flash or a flash of a certain uh, brightness goes off, that it has nothing to do with anything else. How do you respond to that? Well, I'm sure that there are a lot of pictures that that is true of. Mm -hmm. And yet I have seen enough pictures and taken enough myself that I know that it didn't apply. There's one picture I sent you, actually, that is being displayed right now in the Boyden Gallery at St. Mary's College in St. Mary's City in Maryland that the mm -hmm. judges accepted as an atmospheric uh, phenomena where I took a picture of a person who was lighting a match, and I, it, within the picture, far from the match, the match wasn't even lit yet, so there was no light there, is an enormous light orb that is casting a shadow on a glass. It was next to a uh, sliding glass door. There's a shadow on the glass behind it. So there's an actual body, if you would, that is being photographed, and in the picture is its shadow from the sun. Now, you know, dust particles giving off electrons are not going to create shadows. Only if there's so, a second dust particle that just happens to be in the place where a shadow would be. 
Well, it's a, the shadow is a shadow of the, it's the same shape, but it's the reverse of the um, light orb itself that's, that's shining in the glass. Okay. And so there's, there's various things that have happened like this that have debunked it for me. I have one picture of, of me walking into our guest house, and there's this enormous light orb that is up by the rafters that is multicolored and is actually moving towards me that if anybody wanted to say that that was a dust particle, all I could say is, all I can say is, well, you go ahead and say it's a dust particle. There's not too much I can say about that. No. That is definitely not a particle of dust. But you must understand and, in today's world with all the digital effects that are available to anyone with a home computer, that skepticism mm -hmm. is on the rise because a lot of people have oh, been yeah. duped by a lot of people. And as I've said this many times, the Internet is the largest septic tank ever created by mankind. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I agree completely. I've had people challenge me on that and say, you Photoshopped that in. And all I can say is, no, I didn't. I wouldn't do that. I, I, I know I wouldn't do that, but and people can believe me or not believe me. It, I really don't care because I know that the picture was just a picture sure. that this person who was with me took. So it's, it's really about whether people want to open their minds to the fact that there is something else here that they can see. Um, I've had some things happen. I, this, is, this was really fun, and it's happened more than once, and it's happened with other people, too. So... I know that I'm not the only one, is that, and I asked the lighter about it, and they said, yeah. we want to show you that anything is possible. So I've gone back and looked at pictures from the past that have light, orb, light orbs on them now that didn't have them when I originally looked at them, and I know they didn't because they're so prominent you would not be able to miss them. It's not like, oh, all of a sudden over there in the corner there's something you didn't see. It's like front and center, you would have to be able to see this when looking at this picture. And when I questioned the light orbs about it, when people started asking me about their photos and all of a sudden these things were happening, they're saying, we're showing you that anything is possible, that your idea of what reality is is not true. And we can show up wherever we want to show up, and so can you. Yeah. And that's what they keep reaffirming, uh, is that everything we're saying, everything mm -hmm. we're doing, you can do this too. We're the same. We're showing this to you. And I just get a kick out of it. Where do they Where do they come from? What is their purpose? Why don't they communicate with each and every one of us if their purpose is to is not uh, is not anything but negative? Okay, if their purpose is not anything but negative, anything I negative. I didn't say but negative. Anything negative. So if if they're they if. If, if they are good beings, if they work with us, if they want to help us, if they've been with us since the beginning of time, how come I can't see them? How come they don't communicate with me, my daughter, my wife, my friends? Why do they select only certain people? They don't. They don't select certain people at all. In fact, all you have to do, really, Rob, is call, mm -hmm. call them in. All you have to do is request that they appear and open yourself to it. Or if you're not seeing them take pictures, like I call it um, orb hunting. Okay. Like sometimes I'll say, I'm going to go out tonight and go orb hunting. And I just take my camera out. And I just this is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here, and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. 
but the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, this product is a real winner. To learn more about 123 Ready TV, visit our website at www.xzbn.net. Exonation Tony Petrinovich is my special guest, and her website is www. YouArsacred.com. That's www.youarsacred.com. And we're talking about light orbs. She is the chancellor for the light orbs. And how did you become the chancellor for the light orbs? Well, back around 1999 or so, when I first became aware of mm-hmm. them, um, they, they were in my life, and I used to see them, like, physically in my house and this kind of thing. And, uh, you know, it was just life perking along, and there they are, and they're talking to me, and it's just one more phenomena as far as I'm concerned. And I was at La Push in 2004. Uh, it's a, an Indian reservation on the Olympic Peninsula um, off the coast of Washington that is um, a, a resort. Like, people mm-hmm. can go there and stay there, and it's very nice. So I was there, and I was walking on the beach at night, and all of a sudden, there were light orbs everywhere. It was just, I was surrounded in, in, in like the, in a big marshmallow pile of <laughs> light orbs. And I said, okay, what are you here for? What are you doing? And they said, we want you to speak for us. And I said, all right, what does that mean? And they said, well, we want you to, you do what you call soul readings, which is I can see people's souls, and I tell them what's on their soul. Mm-hmm. And they said, we want you to do it like soul readings, but it would be us talking to the person through you. And I said, well, okay. Um, I'm going to need to know much more about you than I know already. If I'm going to do this, because people are going to ask me, I need to be given more information. And they say, and they said, well, we are the guardians of your soul. Hmm. And that's all you need to say. And I said, all right. So I, be, I began advertising that I would speak for the light orbs and I thought well we'll just see what happens and you know I just put it on my web page and yeah. we'll go for it and the first person who said please do a light orb reading for me was someone that I knew really well and I had done soul readings for her I thought well this will be interesting because it's easy for me to be biased I know a lot about her I've done soul reading sure. I, you know so we'll just see what happens and when I opened my mouth and just let them begin to communicate. They said things I would never think of. They said things in ways I would never express. And when I sent it to her, she said, how did you know that secret in my heart? I said, well, I didn't. And that confirmed for me that this information was real, that it was not me, and it was coming from somewhere else. And since then, Mm -hmm. I have been doing this, and it's been absolutely fantastic so are they are they um, the guardians of everyone's soul yes including not like a guardian angel no including what i said including my soul yes including your soul rob (laughs) so so what can they They what can they tell you about my soul what what they do is they look at you from a non-judgmental viewpoint that means they have no expectations of Mm -hmm. you they have no anticipations they don't care what you do okay and they they talk to you about your gifts, how you can express your gifts better in this world. Um, if there's little things that you want to know about yourself, they'll bring that up. It's basically how they see you. And it's, it's done with such love and such, um, like I was telling you on the break, they're so, so humorous. Yeah. They, they joke, and basically I'm a pretty serious person. A lot of people say I don't have a sense of humor. I would never express the way they express. And sometimes I hear the words coming out of my mouth, and I think, oh, my God, I'm going to send this to somebody. And that happened with a lady in England who asked me for a reading, and I was doing it, and they were saying in the reading, oh, you just keep that backpack on, baby. You just keep on trucking with your backpack. And they're just talking to her like she's some teenage kid. And I thought, wow, I wonder how this is going to go over. And after she got the reading, she emailed me, and she said, I do travel with a backpack all the time. How did you know that? 
So this is uh, nothing. So, so this is nothing spontaneous. You have to do this. How long does it take you to do one of these uh, soul or, or soul readings? I they're forty five minutes long, mm-hmm. and what I do is I I don't do it like on the phone or in person. What I do is I just the person requests it, and then I schedule a time to do it. And I sit down in my office. I shut the door. I get really quiet. Mm-hmm. I focus on that person, and then I open to the orbs, and, and I have my recorder going, and I just record it, and I burn it to a CD or send it as a downloadable file if they know how to manipulate those, and that's that. Interesting. It, no, I don't do. It isn't really spontaneous. It's more a, a getting centered so that nothing else is interfering with me except that. Well, what's the difference and, between what you do and what other readers do? Psychics, angel readings. Um, I, and the list goes on and on. How, how you know, like, how can you assure the listening audience right now that what you're saying is true, that you are legitimate? Well, the only thing I can ask them to do is to prepare their consciousness to recognize that they are God in form, and that these beings are also, and that if you can consciously accept mm-hmm. that you are God in form you will understand what they are saying to you. And if you cannot accept that, then you will not. Now, you told me during the commercial break in the news that anyone can call these orbs in and they will appear. This is true. All right, so take us through this. And, and, you know, Exxon Nation, participate in this with me. You know the email address, exxon at exxonradiotv.com. And if you are able to call orbs in to your life as as uh, Tony is going to teach us, send me an email. All right, Tony, tell us how to do yeah, it. Oh, that would be wonderful. All you have to do is get quiet. Part of, part of what's happening, I shouldn't say part of, it's mm-hmm. the main part of what's happening in our world with multitasking, as fast as our lives are, all the anticipation, the economy, the gulf, the this, the that, da, 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 is that people are incoherent. And you have to be a coherent wavelength of energy, which means the troughs and the crests of the wave are equal, just like, you know, so you just make a, a wave on a piece of paper, mm-hmm. it makes it as high and as low equal, equal. That's called coherency. All communication, all life thrives in coherency. When a wavelength is incoherent, you are not resonant with anything. Incoherent wavelengths do not resonate with each other. They just crash into each other. It is dependent upon placing your state in a state of, your being in a state of coherency that allows you to access information that is not what you would call normal talking information. And to do that, you want to get out of your mind. You want to place your attention on your heart space, just right there in your heart space, in your body. This isn't a hallmark moment. This is in your body, Mm -hmm. on your heart, and to breathe into that space because your heart is 5,000 times more electromagnetic than your brain, and it really runs the body. It is what makes you coherent. And when you do that and just focus on a thought that brings up a sense of well-being in your body so that you feel harmonious Mm -hmm. and become as coherent as you possibly can, you open yourself to other dimensions of communication. Then you can hear, then you can see, then you can experience in ways that you wouldn't on a day-to-day basis. And though that would sound like a very simplistic exercise, for people who are going 24-7 as fast as they can, that's very hard to do because it's so far out of the stream of their day-to-day experience. And that is what opens you to being able to see and to hear the the easiest way possible. And it's something that you can practice, and it's something that you can just make a daily practice in your life, light orbs or anything else, Mm -hmm. to bring you into coherent communication with everything that is around you. And that is the way to actually see in other dimensions or to receive information. That's why... You know, you're talking about people who do psychic readings, and you're talking about people who do angel readings and all of these things. You'll find that everyone will settle themselves, however they do that, into a place where they're in their center, 
and they will they will use whatever mechanisms they use so they can allow the information to enter them and to trust the information. What happens so much with people is that you, and I'm talking to the listeners now, and you know this is true, something happens that is extraordinary or out of the ordinary or paranormal, and immediately your mind immediately looks for a place to put it that fits into your paradigm, fits into your belief system. And you discount and you do not trust the fact that there are things that are not concrete, like this desk I'm sitting at. Mm -hmm. There are not physical reality that are just as real as this desk is. And when you trust that and you release yourself into it so that you, you trust that first before your mind says, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. Then you begin to see it. It's, it's it, like anything. It's sort of like when I wanted to buy a red Jeep. I was thinking about buying a red Jeep, and everywhere I looked, I saw a red Jeep. Well, if you want to see orbs or you want to access information and be able to see your soul or whatever people want, it's about focusing on that more than not focusing on it or putting aside the information that you're getting. How much does your belief in your ability to see these orbs play in the actual visualization of the orbs? Um, you might think that it plays a lot, and mm-hmm. yet I have found that that is not necessarily true because there's a lot of people who send me pictures that they have taken and they've told me that they're seeing them at the same time they're taking them. Mm-hmm. And they had absolutely no knowledge of what they were doing. And yet, they didn't say, oh, this couldn't, this is what I'm talking about. They didn't say, oh, this couldn't have happened. They said, oh, look what happened. Can you help me understand this? And that's what I'm saying. It isn't about you, you know, instantly knowing that you believe it and it's going to happen for you and you get into this big drama about it. Mm -hmm. It's simply allowing it to occur and then it is need be asked the question, well, what is this? Why did it happen? What's going on here? It's, it's the allowance part of it rather than the constriction, which is incoherent. Allowance is coherent. And it's the allowance of it that brings the information and energy and light and seeing things as information, just like our words are right now, brings the information into your environment. Now, do these there. light orbs appear at any time of day and night? Oh, yeah, they do, and they appear everywhere. There's a lot of people who think that they only appear in sacred places mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, various, you know, healings and things like that, and that's not true. They appear all over the place. I mean, they're everywhere. So let, so let, me, or night. let me understand that all a person has to do is get into that quiet place with that warm and fuzzy feeling that you get when something positive is, is what you're thinking of, and that, then just invite the orbs in? Yes. Just invite them in. Hmm. So you have to do is invite them in. Now, what, and they will come. Now, when you communicate with them, what kind of voice do they have? Is that is it the voice that we all have, that little inner voice that we hear, that uh, some people call their conscience, or do they have different voices with different orbs? Um, they tell me that they're speaking one voice for the collective whole, when I start to, and it's something I ask them to, to work with me on, when I first started giving whole light readings, my voice changed a lot. Really? And I didn't necessarily care, mm-hmm. except that it was hurting my, my vocal cords. I, after doing a reading, I would feel not, you know, giant pain, but a little bit of soreness. And after a while, I said to them, you know, somehow could we work together on this so that... I have less of a physical strain that I'm experiencing. And they said yes, and so we have. And it's become much, much more fluid and much easier. And um, I don't feel that the same way at all. It isn't for, and I don't know how other people experience information like this, but for me it's not like your inner voice, like your conscience. For me it is simply... Um, information coming into me that I know I didn't know. But if but if you're the chancellor for the light orbs, should you not be the only person who speaks for them? Oh, no. Other people can speak for them, too. I don't know of anybody else that is, but I mean, if, if they ask somebody else to as well, mm-hmm. that's fine. And, and I thought when they 
first started talking about being the chancellor, I thought, well, what, what's the chancellor? I'm not even sure. And I went and I looked it up on the Internet trying to find, you know, the etymology of the word. And it turns out that the chancellor used to be a go-between back in the old Roman Latin days. Mm-hmm. was a go-between between the judge and the outside world, bringing information from the courts from the judge to the outside world. So it was a person bringing information from one place to another, and I thought, oh, well, that makes sense, because that isn't our definition now. Our definition now is just kind of a bureaucratic nothing. But the old meaning of the word is All right, you and I have to take a commercial break. Please stand by. Exonation Nation, Tony Petrinovich is our special guest. She is the Chancellor for the Light Orbs. Her website is www.youarsacred.com. If you've seen any light orbs or you see them using Tony's principle, please, if you can, take a picture. Send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com, and we'll make sure Tony gets a copy of it. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break as the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. My name's Rob McConnell. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hello, I'm Pete Marsh. With my daughter Justina, we will be presenting the new radio show, Too Good To Be True. If something seems too good to be true, it usually is. But with the help of Justina's amazing gifts, we're going to gain insight into questions that don't yet have complete answers. Have you wondered who built Stonehenge and for what reason? Why are crop circles found in the same region as Stonehenge and elsewhere? Are crop circles a hoax or are they created with technologies that we have little knowledge of? Who built the pyramids in Egypt and also in other countries? How and why were they built? Was the Titanic switched with the Britannic as part of a gigantic insurance fraud or for more insidious reasons? What caused the Tunguska event when trees were flattened over an 800 square mile area in Siberia? Will the new insights be too good to be true? Well, that will depend on what you are prepared to believe. Please join us as we start on this journey together. For more information on Too Good To Be True, visit www.xzbn.net. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here, and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, this product is a real winner. To learn more about 123 Ready TV, visit our website at www.x. Exxon Nation, my guest this hour, Tony Petrinovich. She is the Chancellor for the Light Orbs. Her website is www.youarsacred.com. That's www.youarsacred.com. First of all, Tony, great having you here on the show. I want to thank you very much for joining us. It's been a great pleasure talking to you. Oh, it's been absolutely wonderful, and I'm just going to, I'm looking with great anticipation for the listeners to send you their pictures, because yeah. people are taking pictures of light orbs and of course we'll, everywhere. And of course, we'll forward everyone that we get right to you as well. Oh, uh, that would be absolutely wonderful. I li- listen, it. I have to ask you, uh, do a lot of people, or have you talked to the light orbs about the anticipation around December the 21st, 2012, and if you have, what has been their reply? Um, I, I kind of casually mentioned it to them. I haven't really gotten into it. Mm-hmm. Um, they seem to feel that there's much ado about nothing from the standpoint of the way it's being viewed. Right. Not that, not that there isn't something happening as far as 
Earth cycles are concerned, mm-hmm. yes, there is a certain closing of a particular cycle from the standpoint of time. But I was getting the impression that they're seeing it sort of like um, it's going to be another millennium oh, gosh. experience. Like everybody got ready yeah. for 2000 and, and everybody stacked up all the supplies and the day came in, nothing happened. Exactly. And, and that the changes in our consciousness are already in place. I mean, they're already happening. It's not, it's not a static event. It's a dynamic event. And that because people like to have a goal to look at, yeah. and they're telling me this right now as I'm speaking it, because people like to have a goal to look at, they've been given a goal. Hey, just and if a, they just have a, a goal, sec. then may, maybe more will achieve that. All right. I thought you said before you couldn't do spontaneous readings, and you just told me the orbs. Not a re- this isn't a reading. This isn't a reading. I, I, they're just giving me information for me. So they can communicate no. with you at will? Yes. Especially if I place my attention. Like when you said, what did they say? My, my focus immediately went to them. So it's like opening up a telephone line. Interesting. And, and as I was talking to you, then it's kind of like background processing. As I was talking to you, I heard them say, tell them we're giving you a goal. And I said, oh, okay, I get it. So it's about people having a goal where they mm-hmm. can pin something on and say, okay, when we get to this place and something is going to change, as though on December 20th, 2012, they'll be the same, and then on the 21st, all of a sudden, boom, things will be different. You know, sort of like the rapture. You know, one minute you're here, the next minute you're there. And that isn't the way life works. And if we look at nature, we can see that that isn't the way life works. All right, let me, let me ask you this. We've got about a minute left. Do the, do the orbs of light have anything they'd like to share with the Exxon audience worldwide? They've got about 40 seconds. Yes. We're going to repeat what the Chancellor said a few minutes ago. Prepare your consciousness to recognize our appearance. It is the gift of sight that you have. We represent your counterparts in greater creation, and we are here to give testimony to your creative power as God in form. We call you emanations from the eminence, as are we, and we ask you to express in that form. Get out of your mind, into your emanation, and express as the light that you are. Tony, I want to thank you so much for joining us. We've just run out of time. Take care of yourself, and I look forward to sending you the pictures that we get from our and the emails that we get from our listening audience. And let me know when it's going to be on the air, if you would. We've already sent you that information. Take care of yourself, Tony. Great. Thank you. www.youarsacred.com. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break as the Exxon continues. We're right here from our studios right in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. By the way, Tony, this is radio. You're on the air. The orb should have told you.